Have you ever heard of people spontaneously bursting into flames? This seemingly fantastical phenomenon is known as spontaneous human combustion. A source of both fascination and fear, spontaneous human combustion, or SHC for short, has been a topic of debate for centuries. Historical accounts of SHC date back to the 18th century, with cases of burned bodies discovered without an apparent cause. One such case that continues to baffle experts is the mysterious death of Mary Reeser in 1951. Reeser's body was found almost entirely incinerated in her apartment, yet her surroundings were surprisingly undamaged. Was this the work of an external heat source, or could it possibly be an instance of SAC? The inexplicable nature of these incidents has led to an array of theories and speculation, but one question remains, is spontaneous human combustion real, or is it just a myth? To understand spontaneous human combustion, one must first delve into the scientific theories that attempt to explain it. So, let's dive in. At the heart of the spontaneous human combustion mystery are a few intriguing scientific theories. One such theory revolves around the idea of a buildup of flammable gases within the body. It suggests that certain physiological conditions, such as alcohol consumption and obesity, could cause a buildup of methane or other flammable gases. When combined with an enzyme known as methanogens, the theory proposes that these gases could ignite internally, leading to a sudden and explosive fire. But there's another theory that takes a slightly different perspective. It's called the wick effect. Picture a candle. The wax is the fuel and the wick, once ignited, slowly burns, allowing the flame to continue. Now apply this concept to the human body. Imagine clothing or hair acting as the wick and body fat serving as the fuel. A small external flame, perhaps from a dropped cigarette or a spark, could ignite the wick. This could result in a slow-burning, intense fire fueled by body fat. The fire could remain localized, explaining why, in many cases, the surroundings are often left untouched while the body is almost entirely incinerated. These theories, while fascinating, are not without their critics. It's important to note that both require certain conditions to be met and neither has been proven definitively in a scientific setting. Additionally, the wick effect, while scientifically sound, still requires an external ignition source, which doesn't fully align with the spontaneous aspect of spontaneous human combustion. So, where does this leave us? Well, the science behind spontaneous human combustion is a complex and hotly debated topic. It's a blend of chemistry, biology, and a bit of mystery. However, despite these theories, many skeptics argue that SAC is highly improbable. And, as we'll see in the next scene, skepticism is a critical part of this fiery conversation. Skeptics argue that the lack of scientific evidence and the presence of more plausible explanations make spontaneous human combustion highly improbable. This skepticism isn't without reason. The concept of a human body suddenly bursting into flame without an apparent external source of ignition is indeed a challenging one to swallow. The skeptics point out that the alleged cases of spontaneous human combustion lack consistent patterns. In many instances, the victims were alone at the time of their demise, leaving no reliable eyewitnesses. The circumstances surrounding these alleged cases are often shrouded in mystery and speculation, leaving a wide gap for doubt and disbelief. Moreover, the skeptics argue that more plausible explanations exist for these incidents. Accidental fires, for instance, can easily be caused by a dropped cigarette, a malfunctioning electrical appliance, or an unattended open flame. These explanations are far less sensational than spontaneous human combustion, but they are grounded in reality and supported by evidence. Criminal activity is another potential explanation. It's not unheard of for arsonists to stage a fire to cover up a crime, making it appear as though the victim spontaneously combusted. This theory, while grim, aligns more closely with our understanding of human behavior and forensic science. But perhaps the most compelling argument against spontaneous human combustion is the sheer improbability of it. The human body, composed mainly of water, is simply not conducive to combustion. And while it's true that body fat can serve as fuel for a fire, the conditions required for a body to self-ignite are extremely specific and unlikely to occur spontaneously. Despite the skepticism, the phenomenon of spontaneous human combustion continues to captivate our imaginations. It's a chilling thought, a bizarre mystery, and a stark reminder of our own mortality. Yet, the reality is that it remains just that, a mystery. While spontaneous human combustion continues to capture public fascination, its existence remains a subject of debate within the scientific community, with no conclusive evidence to support its reality.